Hello and welcome to Twilight Render's Quick Start Introduction to Materials and IBL Studio Lighting. Today we're going to create this beautiful image here of this little toy that we found in a 3D warehouse. So let's jump right in. First thing you want to do is open your components panel and type in woodblock roller coaster. You'll find this great little toy. Click on the icon to insert it into your model. I've already done so, so we're going to open up the layers and turn on the imported layer. You can close the components panel now and zoom in to uh, place that right at the origin point, just like this. Now we're going to create a ground plane so that we have a backdrop for our photograph we're going to take here today. You're going to select it and right click and choose reverse faces. Now we want to make sure that this thing is about 500 centimeters wide so we're going to use the scale tool and stretch it in one direction type 500 centimeters and type enter. Same with the other direction 500 centimeters hit enter. Now it's 500 by 500. Now we're going to move this whole plane by double clicking it to select the edges and make it a group. Now we can move it around freely. If it were on the red axis we want to move it away about a, a meter and same with on the green axis we want to move it away from there about a meter and now we can zoom into our model and set up our camera view. Get an angle like this and you'll notice that the ground plane in the background we want that edge up higher than the background camera so we can't see the background at all and zoom in as close as you can there we go something like that now we'll show you the scene view tool for twilight scene view tool for twilight allows you to click on any object and rotate your camera about that point so here I'm going to click on this ball and it rotates about that point if I'll click on the very front edge of this I can rotate about that that helps you to set your scene. When you're happy with your scene view, um, when you're using the scene tool, by the way, these red lines on both sides are showing the extents of your rendering. In Twilight, you type your rendering resolution right here if you want. 1200 by 2400. Just type it like that if you want. 500 by 500, type it like that. Or you can use this tool and this is automatically linked by default. If not, then you just click it to link it. Anything that I type here now, it'll keep the proportions in both. Don't have to type them both. If I unlink that and choose 800 here, this stays at 400. So let's choose 640 by 480 as a good test size for preliminary renderings and we'll choose a low preliminary setting. We're going to close that for now. Let's look at this model. This model that we brought in is all one piece. Now I will uh, explode this group so that we can now work with the base or the pieces. Here each of these balls is a component. If I double click it I can open a single component if I triple click it, it'll grab one, two, three, it'll grab all the geometry that's touching that wherever I clicked. And we can see that all the balls are being selected, so we know they're all the same thing. Now, if I were to go in there and paint, uh, if I were to paint this ball any color, all the balls would become the same color, which is not what we want in this case. So I'm going to undo that. So I'm going to do Control Z to undo, and I'm going to push the Escape key to exit out of editing that component. Now I'm going to go to the use the bucket tool again to paint. I'm going to select a color. So go to Colors, and we'll choose a warm color right now, like this warm gray here, and we'll paint the ground. Now we'll choose a red color for the balls in front here. 
yellow color maybe for these further away green color and a blue when you paint inside of SketchUp if you hold the Alt key down while you touch any color that you've already painted in your scene it will load automatically into SketchUp's paint bucket for you so now let's choose a wood color for the base choose the wood cherry original I'm gonna open this group to work with it now this now we use the paint bucket tool and we paint now instead of painting each and every face if you hold the shift key down it'll paint all the faces that are inside of that group in order to hide all the other geometry while you're working in a group I've set up a shortcut but what you can do is go view hidden geometry I'm sorry view um, component edit hide rest of model now let's change the scale of this texture right now it's at 183 centimeters which is way too big let's set it at 30 centimeters something more realistic and then we take this and say texture right click on the face say texture position If you hold the shift key these pins will change and then you'll grab the red pin that's the move tool and then hit enter now we have positioned that texture we could right click on it say texture position again right click on it and say rotate 90 now it's running the lengthwise of the toy now we'll choose the paint bucket and we will sample that by holding the alt key down when we sample that texture now it's also sampling the position the exact position of that texture which we positioned so we don't want to sample this one but rather this one and now if we hold the shift key down and paint on any other wood material inside this component it will all be painted with that same texture UV mapping okay and that's about as complex as it gets today finally we want to paint the um, color for the chrome so let's choose this color paint here we can, uh, color metal can paint along. Now what we we'll want to do is paint the rest of the balls but since I've already done that I will just open that layer up turn this one off and here it is fully painted. When you have your camera view that you want you want to be sure to go to view animation add scene now every time you move your view you click on that scene and it'll rotate back to that view if you want it to move even more quickly you can go to model info go to animation put scene delay, delay to zero and turn off the scene transitions and now when you click on that scene view it'll just quickly click back to that scene to speed up your render workflow now let's see uh, here's the quick rendering of it we don't have to save it here it is in exploration view now let's go to edit the environment right now we're looking at physical sky and this is all the default settings for the physical sky first thing we want to do is unable the Sun disable the Sun and then we're going to choose a spherical sky what we need to do is go to the internet 
Go to kirkathea.net and download the Studio Light by Rayman HDR pack. Unzip that anywhere on your hard drive and load right here. Browse to that file and load the Boxlight HDR. Now you can see that it shows up in our preview right here for the sky. And we can rotate that sky any direction we want. When we do so, we see that it updates here and it also updates in the exploration render view. Although right now we haven't applied any reflectivity to the materials, so it's hard to tell. But let's uh, choose negative 90 and that'll let's see the light come fall nicely across the top of this ball. And we're done editing the environment and done working with image-based lighting. That's studio lighting with an image. Now let's get down to materials. This is the fun part. You get to click on this material here. What the templates do in Twilight is apply physical material properties to your SketchUp materials. So anything from paint, uh, car paint, metal, glass, uh, even light emitting materials, all of these complex layered materials can be instantly created with Twilight Render's template materials. Simply apply them to any surface you've painted already with a SketchUp color or texture. Here let's click on the wood, go to templates, wood, gloss, for the plastic ball, go to template plastic shiny. You can do that for each of the plastic balls. When you hover over each ball, you'll get a tooltip. And finally, for the chrome color here, go to Templates, Metal, Aluminum. Let's change the shininess to 5000, and that'll give us a chrome effect. Now if we try an exploration render of that, we'll see all the materials are working reflectively and the lighting is starting to look good. One thing we might want to do here is select the in select the entire component. Let's move it up in the Z direction off the surface of the floor. 0.2 millimeters just so that it's not touching adjacent geomet geometry. When you're building your models try to avoid conflicting geometry in 3D space. Here we're going to open the render dialog and hit play. And this is just a quick preliminary view. Looking good. Let's increase the exposure now. Try to avoid the temptation to change the lighting too much. If the rendering seems dark, work with the exposure in this panel. Just a quick test rendering. And then one more thing we want to do before the final render. Let's go to materials and let's adjust the wood right here. The wood base was built with sharp corners. These sharp corners give away right away that it's just a rendering and not a real photograph. So let's add a bevel to it. Before we add the bevel we need to weld the vertices and set the hard edge angle to 30 degrees. That means any angle that's less than 30 degrees between two faces will be rendered as smooth. Go to Tools, Convert to Deep Material. Now the Deep Material Editor opens. Select Bump and right click, then choose the Bevel Modifier. Here you can see in the preview that you can choose different previews. It's important to choose the right preview for the right material. In this case, uh, we want to choose 30, to 30 centimeter cube. Let's set this bevel to 1 centimeter on the 30 centimeter cube. You can see it clearly beveling the corners. It's not actually changing the geometry of the model. It's only a changing the way the light works on the corners.
So let's go subtle, let's set it to 0.2 centimeters and close them down. Now let's zoom into the model and see how that is affecting the corner. Now we can see that the bevel is working on the edges, making it smooth and soft. Anything greater than 30 degrees is receiving the bevel. Let's go and choose exterior rendering for the final rendering. Always use the lower rendering settings for preliminaries and the higher render, set, render settings when you're ready for the final. That gives you the quickest workflow. And here it is. After only one minute, here's the scene. We can already see what it's going to look like in the final. We can choose now different post-pro effects like vignette. Let's try setting the vignette to 1, which means that the vignette, the vignette starts at the edge of the photograph. So this is a percentage of the photo. We can set the fall off to be greater than 1. So if we set it at 2, that's distance of twice the distance from the center of the image. So the fade between the 1 and the 2 is subtle. Now we can adjust the temperature. By adjusting it up, it'll warm up the image. And with the bloom, we get a soft glow. Let's set the bloom and the sharpness and change the size. You can play with these settings in many different situations. It'll look different in, in different lighting situations and with different sized renderings. Here's an example of interior progressive rendering and as a final rendering it's a great setting. Here's exposure 1.5 with no uh, post pro and if you want to save your image you simply click this save a copy of the rendered image button or you can right click your image and choose save as your uh, render history is maintained throughout the session so if you do not close your SketchUp model uh, then you can always open the render history or under settings here and you can see all of your test renderings and compare any of them by double clicking on them to open them up you can double click on several at once. Um, there we go. Here they are to compare. If you want to zoom in or zoom out in your rendering, um, oh, you can save your file right here. This one you cannot, if you open it from the history, you cannot uh, change the exposure unless you open it into a separate image editor. So, uh, to zoom in and zoom out of your image, if you're rendering a large image, you right click and choose fit to screen so you can see the whole thing. And you can use, of course, the scroll bars on the side or bottom to navigate your view. This will dynamically change the size of the rendering to fit the size of the box that you have open. There you have it. That's the introduction to Twilight Materials and Studio Lighting. Please be sure to check out our other tutorials on the YouTube channel and on our website.